Chapter 5. Map and PAR. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss post-synthesis constraints and post-place and route implementation checks for Radiant projects. Chapter 5 consists of seven sections. In the first section of the chapter, Creating Constraints with Device Constraint Editor, we will introduce Radiant's Device Constraint Editor, and how it can be used to create physical constraints for a project's device. In Section 2 of the chapter, Creating PTC Constraints with Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints after synthesis. In Section 3 of Chapter 5, Using Physical Designer, we will discuss Radiant's Physical Designer, and what it can be used for. In the fourth section of the chapter, using Power Calculator, we will discuss Radiant's Power Calculator tool, and how it can be used to calculate the static and dynamic power consumption of a design. In the fifth section of the chapter, using Timing Analyzer, we will discuss Radiant's Timing Analyzer tool, and how it can be used to check a design's timing performance after place and route. In section six of the chapter, using Run Manager, the Run Manager tool will be introduced, as well as how it can be used to run the project flow for multiple implementations in a project. Finally, in the seventh section of this chapter, we will discuss Radiant's ECO Editor tool. Chapter 5, Section 4. Using Power Calculator. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing Radiant's Power Calculator, and how it can be used to check if a design is meeting its power design requirements. Radiance Power Calculator is a tool that can be used to estimate the static and dynamic power consumption of a design to ensure that it is meeting its design power requirements. The Power Calculator tool can be used before or after a design has completed place and route. However, it is important to understand that the Power Calculator estimation will be less accurate if it is used before place and route. With that said, there are two ways to launch Power Calculator. The first way, is to select the Power Calculator icon from Radiance Toolbar, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way to launch Power Calculator, is to select Tools from Radiance Menu Bar, then Power Calculator from the drop-down list of options that appears. Both of these methods work exactly the same, and will open the Power Calculator tool in a new window in Radiant. One important thing to remember, is that Radiant also includes a Power Calculator standalone tool, that can be used to analyze a design's power consumption whenever. The main window of the Power Calculator tool can be seen in the figure on the slide. As can be seen from the window, the Power Calculator window consists of several different sections. At the top of the window, is the mode of operation for the Power Calculator tool. Power Calculator has two possible modes that can appear in this area. The mode in the example on the slide, is called Calculation. Power Calculator will be in calculation mode after it has completed place and route, or if some device settings are modified after the Power Calculator tool is opened. The other Power Calculator mode, is called Estimation. Power Calculator will be in estimation mode, if it is open before a design has completed place and route. This is because the tool can only estimate the power consumption of a design, since the tool will have no information on how the design was implemented on a device. On the left side of the Power Calculator window, is the Device Information section. This section contains the device settings for the current Radiant project. Modifying any of the settings in this section will change Power Calculator's mode of operation, to estimation. Next to Device Information, is the Environment Settings section. In this section of the Power Calculator window, users can configure the Thermal Profile. These settings can be modified using the Thermal Profile button, located at the top of this section. These thermal profile settings are used to set the ambient temperature and junction temperature settings, which are both used to calculate the power dissipation of a design. Underneath the device information and environment settings sections is the power calculation summary. A summary of the calculated power consumption can be found in this section. At the bottom of the power calculator window are the power calculation tabs. These tabs contain specific information about the power consumption of a design, by breaking it down into several different components and sections. Some of these tabs, like clocks and I.O. can be used to view and modify information pertaining to the power consumption for those components. The information in these tabs, is used to calculate the total power consumption for a design. 
With that said, we are going to briefly review the basics for some of Power Calculator's main tabs. The first Power Calculation tab we are going to review is the Power Matrix tab. The process for switching tabs is similar to Radiant's other tools with tabs. To switch between tabs in Power Calculator, select the name of the tab you want to switch to from the list of tabs at the bottom of the window. The location of the Power Matrix tab can be seen in the figure on the slide. The Power Matrix tab breaks down the total power consumption of a design in terms of power supply current and power supply wattage. The column on the left side of the matrix corresponds to a voltage sources in a design, and the top row in the matrix lists each component. Each cell in the middle portion of the matrix is the estimated power consumption for a component. By default, the power consumption will be displayed in terms of current through each component, however, the matrix can be viewed in terms of wattage, by selecting block power by power supply from the area at the bottom of the window. The outside portion of the matrix displays the total power consumption for a component or voltage source. The total static and dynamic power consumption is located in the bottom right of the matrix. The next power calculator tab we are going to discuss is the graph tab. Power calculator's graph tab displays the total power consumption of a design as its voltages and ambient temperatures are varied. The two graphs at the top of the window display the total power consumption of a design, as its source voltage is varied. The bottom two graphs in this window display the total power consumption of a design, as the ambient temperature is varied. One useful feature of the graphs in this tab is that it displays the power consumption for a design in worst and typical operating conditions. The two graphs on the left side of this window display the power consumption in typical operating conditions. The two graphs on the right side display the power consumption for a design in worst operating conditions. With that said, we are now going to review the process for saving a power calculator project. As mentioned in the previous slide, a power calculator session can be saved as a power calculator project file. This .pcf power calculator project file can be used to open an existing power calculator project after it has been closed. There are two ways users can save a power calculator project. The first way is to click the save icon from Radiance toolbar, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way to save a power calculator project is to use the Ctrl plus S keyboard shortcut. Once a power calculator project has been saved in Radiant, it will appear in the analysis files folder in the file list tab as can be seen from the figure on the slide. To open an existing Power Calculator project after it has been closed, double-click the name of the .pcf Power Calculator file for the project you want to open. Doing this will initialize the Power Calculator tool and open the project that was selected. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 5.5 using Timing Analyzer.